Hello everyone, welcome back to SFDC Panther. This is Amit, and in this video, we are going to talk about what are auto response rule for our case object. So, in the previous videos, we have talked about email to case, and then we have talked about uh, case assignment rule. In this video, we'll talk about auto response rule. So, before we go ahead, please do like, share, subscribe the channel so that you don't miss any update from our channel. Case auto response rule are the rules which we can use to automatically send a response to our customer. So when we say that, suppose that our customer is sending any email to us and a case has been created inside our Salesforce environment. So what actually happens? Even if you have, you might have faced this in your real time experience as well. You are sending an email to some support. And immediately after or some time or within a minute, you actually get an email from the from their system saying that your case number is this, we have recorded this, and this is the case reference. And then you can just go ahead and send an email back and forth with the customer representative so that you can get help with your case or your issue that you are facing with. Similarly, here in Salesforce. Whenever we are getting a case, either from a community or from a web to case or email to case, or a user is creating a case on behalf of a customer while the customer is on the call or on the chat window, we can have a case assignment rule, not assignment rule, auto response rule, which is going to send an automatic response to the customer regarding their case. This is the case number, and these are all the details that they have provided to us. Like case auto response. Uh, case assignment rule there can be only one auto res uh, auto response rule which can be active at a time but there can have multiple entries inside a single auto response rule so let's quickly see how we can do this inside our salesforce environment and how uh, how this is actually going to work this is our salesforce environment where we are doing setup all these so the very first thing that you need to do is go to setup and from the setup you just need to search for case auto response rule and you will get under feature settings services and you find this case auto response rule once you click here you will see the window like this you might not see any response rule over here i have a created a blank response rule which is saying that send email to customer and it has no entries we are going to create these entries so we'll go ahead and click on new Start order, you can provide in which order your entries are going to be evaluated. I will say 100 or I can say it is 10. Why I am putting these numbers so that in near future, if you wanted to have a start order which is going to be less than this, suppose that if I put 1, right, and in near future there is new entry which is going to be start order less than 1, so you will not be able to do that. So it is always the best practice to provide the numbers like this 100, 200, 300 and then if you wanted to have some entries before that or between two orders you can have those because those numbers are very big and having a big gap between the numbers. What we will say sort order is 100 and for field we will say if case origin, case origin is equal to email and we will also say that if priority is high so we are going to send an auto response to the customers when the origin is email and priority is high so from which email we wanted to send so we'll say that okay this is going to be amit singh and what is going to be your email address usually the email address is going to be your organization wide email address that you have added in most of the cases but you can also use the email address which you have used inside your user while creating the user or what you can have is you can these are the two things that you need to have and one thing that you need to keep in mind is this email must be different from the email to case routing address so if you have an email you set up the email to case routing address that must be different with this email to case that you have so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some email address over here which I am using for my username purpose. Then this is your reply to address. This is the address where your customer can reply. This address should be your email to case routing address. So if you go to the email to case setting, okay, say that we are going email to case as we have already 
done the setup if you have not watched those videos please go ahead watch those videos as well how to do the email to case setup and then you can resume this video from here so usually those email to those reply to address is this address whatever your address is for your email to case you can just go ahead and say that reply to address which is the actual address where user will be sending an email and the case will be created to salesforce and then email template what information you wanted to send to your customer you also have noticed right whenever you are receiving an email there is some sort of template a format that you receive like your case number is this your subject is this your description this is what you have sent to us and we will resolve it in some and so and so time so in salesforce there is already a simple template which you can search for here you can search for response you will say support colon case response you can just go ahead and use that and then you have got specify whether to copy like whether to copy all two and cc response on the response so what this is saying is suppose that while sending the email the customer has uh, put some emails in the cc as well suppose that to the higher management they put in the cc so do we want to notify those as well we'll say that okay send to all those so that uh, our management can also get notified that we are working on the case you can just skip this survey part this is not part of this video and then go ahead and click on save now you have got two here so by default order is taking as one itself over here so we have got this is the one order you can have multiple orders over here based on your customer requirement and the ordering thing that we have seen right we can have this reorder over here and then we can uh, just uh, if we have multiple entries we can reorder those based on this button next thing that we need to do is we need to go to the object manager and edit the case space layout like we did for case assignment rule so we will go to the case and find the page layout the correct page layout where you uh, like which you wanted to edit i will go ahead and edit case page layout and then click on layout properties and then this email notification checkbox make sure it is saying that so on edit page and selected is by default so I will make sure I'm selecting these two. Go ahead and click on OK and save it. If you have multiple case page layouts based on the multiple record type, you need to do the same thing for all the page layouts that you wanted to have. Now we have set up our case auto response rule. We have set up our page layouts. Time is to create a new case. So we'll go to the case tab and create a new case. We'll say that OK. Status is new. Case origin is going to be email. Let's quickly select a contact because this email will be sent to a contact. And we also had one thing which was priority should be high. And then we will say that okay, the subject is test auto response rule. Now, in the bottom, if you have noticed, this checkbox was already there for, a time, uh, for our active assignment rule. Now this is saying that send notification email to the contact. So if we uncheck this checkbox, the email will not be sent to the contact. But if we check this checkbox, the email will be sent with the help of your active auto response rule. So we will go ahead and click on save. So now you can see the case has been created. And if you notice, there is one email entry has been made. And what email entry is? It is saying that your case order, this is the subject which a customer has been received. And then this is the from address where we sent. This is the to address and status is sent. So what happens whenever we are sending an email to the customer, those emails are getting added as an emails under that case. And if you have, if you mention or if you remember in case of email to case, we also said that create an activity history that is why it just it did create an activity as well for our case record so that is how your auto response rule works if you go to this emails open this email you will be able to see what exactly the email you have sent whom you have sent that email and what particular case record is which is associated with that email if you go to the activity tab you will also see that this is how these are happening your case assignment rule is also working. 
So you sent an email notification, then that the case owner has been changed from to high priority queue. So if I open the email which has been sent to me, you can see here I have opened the email in the print format so that I can show you. So you can see here this is the email, this is the name who sent, and from here we have sent. Okay. And say that dear Amit, thank you for contacting us with your inquiry. Your reference number with the case is this, and the subject is this. And we are looking to uh, forward to speaking you soon. So this is just a sample that Salesforce has provided, and we are able to see the response. Customer can go ahead and reply this response. So if the customer will reply, one more email will be added to this particular email thread. So this is how basically your case auto response rule works. And this is it for this video. Thank you for your time. And uh, we will meet you into the next video. Before you go ahead, please do like, share, subscribe the channel so that you don't miss any update from our SFDC Panther channel. Thank you.